is up? How's everyone doing? My name's Allie Mikofsky, and you're back listening to my podcast another week. Hey, quick, uh, quick little plug. If you are in the Washington, D.C. area, I'm going to be performing at the D.C. Comedy Loft on December 9th through 11th. Never forget, come out to see me. Um, hope to see you there. I don't think I've ever been to D.C. to do... I haven't been to D.C. to, like, do my own show. I don't think I've been to D.C. period. Queen Slay. Period. So, if you're in the D.C. area, if you know someone in the D.C. area, please tell them to come out and see me do stand-up comedy. Um, when I was in St. Louis, my queen, uh, Ellen... Fuck, is that her name? Ellen? Colleen? Fuck. You know, I'm trying my best here. But, uh, let me just double check. Yep, I got it right. Go, Allie. Uh, my Queen Ellen. I don't think... Do people listen to this podcast and not know that I do stand-up comedy? Because if you didn't know, now you know. Come out to see me in Washington, D.C. Um... And it'll be, it'll be a hoot and a holler. It'll definitely be a hoot and a holler. Right before Christmas, come out to see me do a little comedy, talk about my butthole. What'll get you in the holiday spirit like that? I don't know. Um, so yeah, that was my announcement. That was the big announcement. And then I'm done. I'm done doing stand-up forever. That's gonna be my last show. Until 2022, when I make my triumphant return into the comedy scene. Everyone's going to be talking about it. Hey, did you hear Allie quit comedy for two weeks? Yeah. It's kind of like the Dave Chappelle sitch when he went to Africa. But instead of Africa, I'll be going to my mom's house for the holidays. Kind of similar. Yeah, kind of similar. This year doesn't, you know, I the Christmas spirit hasn't hit me quite yet. I haven't felt that holly jolly. I haven't felt the sunlight of the Santa. I don't know what it is. Maybe global warming. It's been awfully warm in Los Angeles. Uh, I haven't seen too many lights. I love a good light on a house. But it's hard, I guess, because in LA there's so many apartments. Who's really putting up lights on apartment buildings? Not many people. Not me, that's for sure. Um... Yeah, I haven't felt the I haven't felt the spirit of Christmas. I just did Hanukkah with my dad's side of the family. I ate some latkes. It also wasn't really quite a festive Hanukkah this year. We had like spaghetti and meatballs. That doesn't scream Jewish heritage and pride. But, you know, the Jews were there. The Jews were out and about. Once my family gets together, like like my dad's side of the family, anytime we're all together in a group, it feels like Hanukkah. Don't you think? They're just so... They're so Jewish. They truly are. My boyfriend doesn't believe I'm Jewish because I'm Jewish on my dad's side. My mom is a dirty Catholic whore. So some people don't consider that to be Jewish because, uh, you know, they consider it only on your mom's side to be real Jewish. But if you spend five minutes around me with my dad's side of the family, I feel like it's Jewish enough to make up for my mom's Catholic devil ways. You know? Also, is anyone really religious anymore? Like, is anyone really practicing any religion anymore? No. No, you're not. I'm more Jewish than you are, buddy. Because I, my family's all here. They're all Jewish. Your mom's Jewish, sure. But, like, that's it. You're not... Do- yeah, but your aunt's in Michigan. You're not doing Jewish shit out here. I'm doing Jewish shit out here. I do Hanukkah out here. I don't know. I just feel like we're... You can't say you're more Jewish or I'm less Jewish. I feel like we're both just Jewish sometimes. When the time is right and the moon is out. So, yeah. I lit the I lit the Hanukkah. I just found out. Here's the thing. If you're not Jewish, every Hanukkah, 
you got to like, like you never have a Jewish holiday where you get to just celebrate. Except for Purim, but no one really does that unless you're a child. Purim is Jewish Hanukkah or Jewish, uh, Jewish uh, Halloween. But even that, I remember doing a Purim when I was a child and you still got to do some history. Like, I guess it's the same with Christmas if you're like Catholic or whatever. Like you go to church and you have to hear some old white man talk about, you know, why Jesus died for your sins. But with Hanukkah, it's like you have to do a whole reading. You have to do... You know, you have to talk, like, with uh, Yom Kippur, you have to talk about, like, modern-day slavery, right? Isn't that Yom Kippur? Yeah, you don't even know, you little poser, you little copycat bitch. But every Jewish holiday, there's some reading, there's some assignment, there's some history. It's like, let us just eat fried foods, which I found out from the reading at Hanukkah last night. The reason we do fried foods is because of the oil that kept the, you know, lights burning at this temple that was supposed to be, you know, synagogue that was supposed to be burned down. The light was still burning, which is why on Hanukkah you eat fried foods because the oils. I like it. I'm here for it. Yes, Queen Slay. Um, but yeah, there's always something. But it was a nice time. What? Yom Kippur is, according to my boyfriend, the, uh, the, the, week, the week that God, that God decides person's each person's fate. Comes after Rosh oh, Rosh Hashanah is the one about slavery. Yeah. Okay. Celebratory freedom. Okay, Rosh Hashanah is the freedom. Yeah, Rosh Hashanah is the new year. But then that means Yom Kippur is the slavery. Something has to do with slavery. I don't know. It's hard to keep up. All the Jewish holidays have some sort of dark underside. Like, it's never just, like, a fun holiday. It's, like, Hanukkah isn't even, like, a set. Hanukkah is the celebration of being free, but it's only because there was some sort of war with the Maccabees. Yada, yada, yada. No wonder Jews complain all the time. We don't have a fun holiday where we just get to get drunk and go streaking. It's all, like, based in some dark history. Even, are you sure? I think there's something, there's some holiday about sla enslaved. Maybe slavery is not the right word. Enslaved. Jewish holiday about being enslaved. Feels offensive to call it a holiday. It's just a juxtaposition. It's not a holiday. What? Why'd you give me that face? Good word, juxtaposition. Why do I always... I feel like it's only when I'm doing this podcast, I get nasally. My voice suddenly, I feel like I, I hear myself talking. What? Passover. Passover is the one about enslaved Jews being free. Being free. Yeah, but yeah. being free from. Yeah, it's just like, come on. Give us like a St. Patrick's Day. Watch St. Patrick's Day is like enslaved Irish people. What is the history of St. Patrick's Day? Do we know? Oh, remember when Kiss Me I'm Irish shirts were super popular? I had that in like fifth grade. Kiss Me I'm Irish. It's like I haven't even been properly kissed. Uh, so the reason I'm checking my phone right, what? What's St. Patrick's Day? Oh, it's just celebrating religion coming into Ireland. Ireland. Um, pagan sounds fake. Pagan sounds made up. I know it's real, but I mean, should this just be a religious episode where we talk about all the different religions? I looked up Hare Krishna um, yesterday. Would that be considered a religion or a cult? A religion. So, Hare Krishna, I looked it up because George Harrison from the Beatles, famously a Hare Krishna, and I just watched the Beatles docu-series, which was so good, and also so long. 
I wish they also put released an abridged version for if you're like a fan of the Beatles, but not that big of a fan and you just kind of want the highlights. Because this version, I'm surprised they didn't show them just taking a little piss break. You know, it was so long. There was so much just, it was a lot. But man, now I have a crush on the Beatles and I can't even bone any of them because they're all practically dead or almost dead. And now I have, like, beetle fever, and I just want to go to their concerts and make signs and wear slutty outfits to try and bone them all. And I can't even do that. What's the fun in being a fan of a band that you can't, you know, fantasize about boning? When I was younger, I used to like Ringo. I'm not sure why. I think just because he had a cool name and he was kind of... When I was young, I really liked the underdogs of any situation. And Ringo was kind of the underdog of the band. He was the drummer. He's in the background. Like, he's not really soaking up the limelight of being in the Beatles. So when I was younger, I really liked Ringo. I thought he was cool. But after watching this... After watching this docuseries... Mama's mama's kind of a freak for Paul McCartney. I'd bust down on Paul right now. He's alive. If I saw him in the streets, I'd shake my ass for him. I'd do a gentle shake of the ass. Paul seems like an ass man. He seems like a good guy. Good guy. Paul seems like a... No, I can't do it. That sounds offensive. <sighs> But I love Paul. I do not like John Lennon. I'll start beef with John posthumous. Posthumorous. John just seems like it got to his head. And he just, you know, I don't know. Yoko just corrupted him. He got all serious and weird. Spoiler alert, but it was their last live show. That's what the docuseries, the last episode of this series, is them doing their last live show all together. And they're having, this looks like, you know, because they were all kind of fighting with each other. Their manager died, so they had no one to, like, you know, keep them in, you know, spick and span, doing their thing. So Paul kind of had to step into the big boy shoes, which I think is why I found him so attractive. He's, like, having a good time, making jokes, but also keeping the whole band together. And that's, you know, that's daddy moves. That's, he, he was doing it all. He was pulling his pants up high and tight and uh, getting the Beatles in order. And so they're all kind of, there's all this drama, personal. George quit the band like three times during like a two-month period. Uh, And then John is just a slave of Yoko. He's just, they're just connected at the hip. She's bringing him down. They do this live performance, and it's the most fun they've had. All of them are giddy. They're smiling. They're having a great time. They haven't performed a live show in, like, three years. And then all of a sudden, right after the show, fucking John walks out. He sees Yoko looking like a sad little pissy bitch. My stomach's growling so loud. I wonder if you'll be able to hear it. And and John goes up to her after the most fun of his life. And he goes, what's the matter? What's the matter, Yoko? Ugh. Talk about a wet frickin' blanket. I don't like it. I don't ship it. I didn't ship it. You know who I ship? Me and Paul. And Ringo, a little three-way. And George, I like George. Oh, are you sad that I'm gonna leave you for the Beatles? We're all dead. Yeah, but I'm not going to bone Paul or Ringo. Because, you don't want to. because I have a boyfriend. And he cock blocks me from potential hookups with the Beatles. Babe, just let me hook up with the Beatles. Yeah? Okay. I'll show him your music. If you let me bone him. Um, yeah, so... I don't know. John was really funny, though. I like John, but I also don't like him. But he's great. But he bothered me. George. Love George. But anyway, he's a Hare Krishna. And so I was looking up the principles, how you can become a Hare Krishna. And it's a lot of work. It's too much work. 
you got to meditate like 16 times a day. They say you can do it once, but ideally like it's like something like 16 times and you have to carry this kind of like rosary type of thing. And you say this chant or this prayer and each time you do a rosary bead, but this is a long chain. This is a big, long rosary bead. You can wrap it around your neck like three, four times. That's a lot of beads you have to be doing. And you want me to count these chants 16 times a day? That's like a lot of praying and meditating. It's like, yeah, of course you're going to be freaking peaceful. You got nothing else to do except for say, Hari Hari, Krishna Krishna. What? The Hare Krishnas are in Venice? I don't believe those ones. I know, but I don't believe it. I don't believe I don't believe anything on Venice. There's people walking on glass and then you're supposed to tell me that there's Hare Krishnas who are really about the business. Like, I don't want to buy a t-shirt for $5 that says, I'm not a gynecologist, but I'll take a look. And then a guy who's like, your life will change. Trust me. I'm on Venice Beach. Things are going well for me. No way. If I'm going to join some sort of cult, I want to be a millionaire. Or I want to live somewhere else. I don't want to have to go to Venice on the weekends with a little laminated sheet that says the prayer and a microphone that I wear around my waist. It's embarrassing. Abhiro Bears was Hare Krishna. Yeah, he was Hare Krishna. That's why he's a vegetarian. That was the other thing. You have to be a vegetarian or a vegan because you have to respect animals. Because if you kill animals, then karma will get you. Um, what else do you have to do? I don't remember. As soon as I read the pray and meditate thing 16 times a day, I was out. It's too much. Oh, but the cool part is you set up like kind of an altar in your house to have this little meditation station. And I was like, that'd be kind of fun. Have a little, have a little, uh, serenity circle. Just set up some nice cushions on the floor. You put up like nice photos. I would just do like a really hot photo of me and God, which is also me. So yeah, I don't think I'll do Hare Krishna, but it would be cool to have some sort of funky little spiritual thing. Kabbalah. Yeah, I don't know. I've always been the type of person who wants to find some sort of spiritual indoctrination of some sort. They just, none of them, I wish there was one that was like our higher power is Instagram and TikTok. But that already is mine, and let me tell you, it's not working for me. All right, babe? I hate it. I'm so addicted. I know I talk about this all the- Oh, I said I was going to do a freaking December detox. Hate to break it to you guys, but I've been retoxing. Yikes, I've totally forgot. That's because I only said it once. But you know what I'm saying every single day? I'm saying that I'm quitting smoking January 15th. I've been saying it every single day because my uncle quit smoking by saying every day that he was going to quit on a certain date. And then when the date came around, he just stopped. So we'll see if it works. I forgot that I was going to detox in December, but there's no rules. I guess I could technically start now. What would I do? Well, I would only go on Instagram if I was going to post something, like posting about my show, whatever. But not going on just to scroll. Do you think I could do it? Would you give me... Would you? Would someone Venmo me money if I did it? Would you give me money if I did it? For a full 30 days. For a full 30 days. Really? How much money? Okay. I'm going to do it. I'm going to stay off my phone until Christmas. Only to post. TikTok too. No t- I haven't been on TikTok that much recently. I haven't been watching that many TikToks. Name the last time we scrolled through TikTok together. You can't. Because I've just been on Instagram. No, I wasn't. I was watching someone posted a TikTok to Instagram. Yeah. Very different. A TikTok on Instagram, not even close to being the same. 
But yeah, I've just been binge watching a lot of movies, a lot of TV shows. I watched Pen15, which, you know, took me a while to start watching it, but it's such a fun show. I love it. We watched Dope Sick, which was a real fucked up show. That's a good one. Especially because my own father is a pill popper. So that really hit home. That really struck a chord. But it's crazy. I didn't realize the magnitude of uh, pill addiction in the early 2000s. Late 90s. Late 1900s, I like to say. It was the late 1900s. Isn't that weird to say? I was born in the late 1900s. But yeah, Pen15 is great. Dope Sick is great if you haven't watched it. I love Michael Keaton. I'm a little slut for Michael Keaton, too. <laughs> I'm a little slut for everyone but you, babe. That's not true. <laughs> babe, just get really famous, be on a TV show, and I'll be a little slut for you. Get fans, get groupies, be the Beatles, and I'll be a little slut for you. You're just a little too underground right now, babe. I'm just kidding. I've just been in such a funk, and I know I keep saying that. I know I'm a broken record. But maybe I'm not in a funk. I don't want to talk about it. It's so boring to talk about. I go in and out of a funk. I think it's because I have no structure. I have no routine during the day. I just watch my little shows, scroll my little Instagram, do my little podcast, go to my little shows, and then start over again. I need to have some sort of structure. I need to be Hare Krishna. I'm going to be vegetarian. I'm going to be vegan. I'm not going to go on my phone. I'm going to pray 16 times a day. No, I'm not. But let's see. Let's at least go a week. Let's see if next week when I do this episode, if I feel better having not been on my phone. Oh, but I have to know that's not going to work because I'm going to I'm going to Washington, D.C. and I'm going to be at the airport. I have to be on my phone at the airport. Read a book. Guys, let me know in the comments below. Give me a book suggestion, please. I don't want any, I need something that'll grip me in. I need something that'll hook me. If I'm not hooked by the first five pages, I'm not finishing that book. Okay. What was a good book that I read? Oh, the Matthew McConaughey book was great. But I was doing audiobooks, so that doesn't really count as reading. I did, uh, there was some book that I read that was so good. I kind of like a thriller, mystery Something that makes you wonder, keeps you guessing. Oh, the book that I had recently that I couldn't finish was a Nicholas Sparks book. I thought I was going to go through some, you know, romantic, sexual, you know. All his books are like Republican leaning. They're all like veterans who live in South Carolina, who have some dark backstory and just want a simple life with a blonde girlfriend who will cook for them. That's a Nicholas Sparks book, and it gets me every time. But this one was so boring. But there's kind of an aspect of maybe was his dad murdered? Does someone know something about his dad? Probably not. There's no murder in it. I read a book where they captured someone in a cage. No, I watched a show about that. The Dateline. The Turpin family, where 15 kids were kept hostage... If you guys haven't looked at it, go on YouTube, uh, the 2020 interview with this girl. I think her name's Danielle Turpin. It's so insane what happened to her. You got to look it up. I don't need to go into details. But I feel like I, I don't think I read a book about someone getting captured. Oh, oh, no, that, that the girl, the book you're talking about, she was a baby. She was a nanny for a family. She was not captured at all. That was a good book. I think it was like A Fun Age. Such a Fun Age was the name of the book. That was a good book. No one was captured. No, she was a nanny. I got a dog. We bought a zoo. We bought the movie with Matt Damon. The hit movie, We Bought a Zoo. Didn't we have that joke when we first started dating? 
Yeah, we did. We bought a zoo. It's in our text history. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if I've ever deleted our text from when we first started dating. That'd be fun to read our text. We... I don't know. Sometimes I delete texts. We bought a zoo. Let's see. No, nope, I'm not showing up. Zoo? I wonder if I could just search zoo if anything would pop up. Hmm. Apparently I've said zoo a lot. Oh, it's because it thinks I'm saying zoom. Bought. Uh, zoo. No. Um, yeah, I'm fostering a dog right now, which, uh, has been an interesting experience, to say the least. I've really been wanting to adopt a dog, and I haven't been... Oh, I got close to adopting this one dog named Trevor, and this dog was so cute, but it seemed like we did a little meet, meet and greet with it. Like, we were backstage at a Jonas Brothers concert. We did a little meet and greet with Trevor, and it seemed like something might have been wrong with its back leg. And financially, I can adopt the dog, but financially, I can't really, you know, I can't start off my adoption journey with a surgery. Does that make sense? Like, if I had a dog for a year, and then suddenly it needed surgery... Sure. Yeah, of course. I've had a year to bond with this dog. I've had a year to be saving more money. But to start off a relationship with a dog, $4,000 in the hole, I'm already, I'm going to have a resentment towards that dog off the bat. I can't have a dog that I just spent $4,000 on. You know, does that make sense? I'm not a bad person, but if this dog will get adopted by someone else, it's in a, you know, it's not, I'm not adopting it from a shelter where it's going to get killed. So I don't feel bad about taking my time and being picky. These dogs that I'm looking at adopting are in foster homes. So, you know, I'm fostering a dog right now. There's plenty of people fostering these dogs. They're not going to get killed. So I don't want to spend $4,000 to get it a surgery. So it was a no on Trevor. Great dog, though. Cute dog. But, so then I started fostering this dog, Conroy. Terrible name. It's so, you keep wanting to say Conrad. Conroy just, it doesn't flow off the tongue. Then I keep wanting to call it Connor. But I know too many dudes named Connor. And it doesn't fit this dog's energy. I really want to name the dog Dingus. Because it is, it's a dingus. It's a little bit blind. It just chills in its crate. It's emotional. It's scared. And it's got goopy eyes. Real goopy eyes. I try to wipe off its eyes. It's really not a good looking dog. But it is in an ugly way. Which I like. I like a kind of... I like a butterface dog. I don't want a sexy dog. I want a cute dog. But I don't want one of those sexy dogs that looks like it's in a show or something. Man, I'm hungry. I got groceries. I got sick for... Oh my god, I threw up the other night randomly. I threw up like a child. Like a child does. A little kid. I... So I made tuna, and I made the mistake of adding lemon to my tuna because my boyfriend told me to add lemon to it. I added too much lemon. Way too much juice. You said you always add lemon juice to your tuna. What do you mean it was after I added it? And you said, yeah, I always do that. But you've said it before. No, I asked you. I said, should I add lemon? You said, I always add lemon. Yeah. During the thing. And just add it randomly. So I added lemon juice. Bad idea. I also think the tuna was bad. And I asked you if it was bad. And you said no. And it was like brown on some parts. It was definitely bad. So I ate faulty tuna. I ate disgusting tuna. I thought tuna doesn't go bad. It's in a can. That's what we're donating to shelters. Faulty tuna. Brown spotted tuna. Looked like the tuna had shit itself after already being dead and shredded in this can. So anyway, disgusting tuna. And then on top of that, I made, you know, little sliced cherry tomatoes with feta cheese and olive oil and lemon juice. More lemon. So maybe it was too acidic. Hasidic. I had Jewish Orthodox 
tomatoes and tuna. Maybe it's too acidic. Oy vey. Right, babe? Even I'm, like, starting bits and then I'm, like, don't have the energy to keep it up. Sorry, folks. So, so then after I ate these two disgusting meals, me and my boyfriend decided to go for a walk because I was feeling a little crazy, cooped up in the house, binge watching Instagram, TV, movies. So we went on a nice long walk. We went to go to this boba place. That was our mark because that was 15 minutes walk from my house and then 15 minutes walk back. So it's a 30 minute walk. That's a good walk for someone who's been sitting on the couch all day. So, we walk to this boba place. I get a giant boba, which is like 90% milk. And after I chug this down, I wasn't sipping it. I was chugging it. And we continue our walk. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I feel like I need to throw up. And we kept walking. I powered through the walk. But the whole time, it was the kind of like throw up where you don't even want to like look at someone or think about something for too long. Because it just makes you even more nauseous. So I was just kind of walking at a different pace with my boyfriend. Just on the brink of throwing up. As soon as we get to my house, I sit on the floor. Oh, the tomato. It was disgusting. I felt like the exorcist. I was, you know, putting my finger down my throat for a while. But then all of a sudden, it was just on its own. Just (laughs) spewing. And then I felt immediately better right after. But doesn't that suck when you throw up? You're like, I just wasted money. I wasted food. Pay me back. That's what it feels like. Um, yeah, I should eat it. I would just have to add more lemon on top of it for flavor. My boyfriend made me LOL. First time in a long time. <laughs> Why am I such a grumpy pants lately? I get, yeah, I gave my boyfriend the silent treatment yesterday when he came over to my house before Hanukkah. I'm being a real bitch to you. I gotta figure that out. Gotta figure out the root of that. It's over. This is the last episode of this podcast with a boyfriend. You guys can all start following me back on Instagram. I'll be single again. No, I'll stick it out with you. Even if I don't want to for at least a few more months. Just kidding, babe. Oh, yeah, but Conroy. (laughs) Conroy, he's six years old. Here's his backstory, which everyone loves to do when they have a dog who's fucked up. Conroy was rescued from a hoarder's home in Merced. So if you know any hoarders in Merced, I have their dog and I'm not giving it back. Um, I'm only watching it. Until Tuesday, because then I leave for D.C. and he'll be in another foster home, which I feel bad about because he takes so long to warm up. He's not even warmed up to me, and I've had him for, what, four days? Five days? He's, you know, he's... But that's kind of what makes you love him. He's so hard to get. You just want him to like you. But he got rescued from this hoarder's house with, like, six or seven or eight other dogs. Might have been one of eight. And he was picked up covered in his own frickin' poop and piss. And he was matted all over. His hair was all matted. And then they shaved him. He looks cute now. He's got these weird eyes where there's like... It looks like he's wearing eyeliner. Um, Yeah, he's just a funky little guy. But he's so shy, he just sits in his crate. So I got a camera from Target to sit in my house. Also for security purposes. So I can record. So I can just kind of screen record uh, any intruders and get a lot of likes on Instagram. Oh my god, my place was broken into. How scary. That'll go viral. But yeah, now I get to watch uh, now I get to watch a little con con man. What's he doing? So now it's like a live stream. It's like the best reality show ever. I just get to watch him mosey around the house, piss on the floor. He's only peed on the floor twice. Should I record it? Well, I have the one saved from when he's walking around, you know? So I think I'll use those. I'll show you guys what he's up to. He's just sitting in his crate right now. He loves the crate. Can't get enough of it. 
only I could get a credit from our boyfriend over here. Just kidding, babe. Yeah, so I'm watching this dog. We picked it up. The people who dropped him off to us were super weird. Right? Weird vibes. Bad vibes. I need to take a break. One moment. I'll be right back. Uh, yeah, so I've been watching this dog. I'm a real dog mom. Fostering has made me realize I don't want to get a dog until I don't live in a great area. So I just feel bad taking this dog on walks with junkies. Just roaming around. There's the grass that's in my neighborhood is just filled with other dog shit that people don't pick up. There's like broken bottles in the street. It's just, it's just not, it's not where I want to, you know, build a family of dogs. So it was a good experience. I think I'll keep fostering whenever I'm available to. Because it's fun, but also it's so annoying having to pick up shit if the dog's not trained. And the dog's pretty good. It's only at night. He'll just do one quiet little piss in the corner. He makes it as convenient as possible to pick up. Yeah. The first night, he pooped by the door. He got a little bit on your shoe. Um, and then the third night he peed in the kitchen, which was an easy cleanup. And then last night he peed kind of in the same area in the kitchen, but he doesn't use the potty pads, which is the annoying part. He's blind. Yeah. And I think the texture of that makes him think that he shouldn't go there. Whereas on the wood floor feels a little more. Is that, I don't think they put any scent in. Well, he's not picking up on the sense of the pee pad. But, uh, yeah, he's a good boy. I hope he finds a good home. If you're interested in adopting this precious dog and you're in the L.A. area, you can go to the LaBelle Foundation's Instagram, look up Conroy, submit an application. What? Yeah, I'll autograph the dog in Sharpie. He's white with black spots. We'll do a meet and greet all two of us. Me, Conroy, and you. Me and Conroy will do a meet and greet. I like him. He's funky. He's a funky dog. But yeah, I hope he gets adopted. But yeah, so I did that. I'm gonna get off my Instagram. I need to, yeah, I need to do that. Okay, this is my promise to all of you listeners, when this episode comes out on Wednesday, or whenever you listen to it, we're all going to do a week. I'm going to do it after this episode because I'll record the next episode in a week. So that'll be a week for me. Let's all do a little detox. Only go on your phone if you need to post something, something important. Or I would say to give you a little leeway. 30 minutes a day. That's all you get. You can divide it into five minutes, you know, throughout the day, but 30 minutes a day on Instagram or TikTok or Twitter or whatever. And to answer, I don't have my DM notifications turned on, but if I go on my phone, you know, say five minutes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you can only, you have to look at your social media as kind of like a personal business. Okay, so y- you got to check your mail. You got to put on your little glasses, open up the DMs, respond, be kind. But just no mindless, aimless scrolling. That's the point. So we'll all do a week, okay? Pinky promise. Put your pinkies up right now. Promise me. I can't do this alone, guys. Okay, we promised. Don't fuck this up for us. You're going to feel real shitty if you do. I'm probably going to fuck it up. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Um, My sister got married in San Francisco at City Hall before Thanksgiving. At a good Thanksgiving, I think. It was good. Ate some decent food. Wasn't as good as last year, I'll be honest. Something got a little mixed up this year. But it was nice. The family time was nice. My boyfriend got to spend a lot of time with Lair Dog. 
A lot of time with my parents. A lot of time with my sisters. Um, my sister got married at City Hall in San Francisco. It was beautiful. Um, I made another speech. It's two weddings in one year. No more weddings. But it was nice because my first sister had such a big wedding. Destination, you know, it was all the way in Colorado and Aspen. There were a lot of people. Like, it was a whole, you know, it was like a big wedding. My, my other sister's wedding, my sister Courtney, she had a more intimate wedding. And it was really cool to see that you can have, like, a nice little wedding like that. It was nice. I liked it. I watch all my TV shows with closed captioning on them. I love closed captioning. Makes me feel closer to my deaf grandma who's passed away. But I like the closed captioning. You learn what weird uh, sounds are called like this. It sucks teeth. So if I go... Sucks teeth. Blows raspberries. That's blows raspberries. What else is there? Yeah, those are the only two standouts, but... I'm sucking my teeth right now. I'll be sucking something else later to make up for what a bitch I was to you on this podcast, right, babe? He just found out his friend is boning. His friend's in a relationship and they're boning three times a week. I'm practically just your friend at this point. Practically just boys. We just watch TV together, run some errands together. Yeah, we've been together five years. It's only been a year. Should we have a, should we have Dr. Drew on the podcast and we'll talk about our relationship? I would love to get Dr. Drew on this podcast. I'm such a slut for Dr. Drew. Call back. Full circle. I do love Dr. Drew. We got to get him on the pod. Should I DM him right now? Dr. Drew. Long time listener. First time caller. I love Dr. Drew. That'd be a fun episode. No, right? Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew Pinsky. Two in the Pinsky, one in the Stinsky. Hi, Dr. Drew. Should I just say that? Hi, Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew, what up? Dr. Drew. My name is Ali Mikofsky. Now he knows what it is. I'll draft this later. While I masturbate. Um... Uh, what an episode, guys. What an episode. Was this a dirty episode? No, it wasn't. I said two nasty things. All men think about women talking about sex. Dirty, dirty, dirty. I talked about so many not dirty things. I talked about fostering a dog. I blew the microphone. Yeah, so what? <laughs> Here's the thing that I don't understand about. So there's the memes that go around and it's always like when you bust and she keeps sucking and the face is always something a little bit fucked up, but it's fucked up in a way where it's like, are they enjoying it fucked up or is it hurt fucked up? And I don't know. Are, am I supposed to keep sucking when you're busting? How long do you suck after a bust? Is it an immediate release of suck? Or do you keep sucking a little bit? Or do you slow down the suck, lighten it up? I don't know. These are the questions women ask. Do guys say, hey, when when I do this for a girl, no, they don't ask any questions. They do whatever is comfortable for them. Meanwhile, girls are trying to wrap their brain about, oh, do I keep sucking? (laughs) Hmm. <laughs>
Mm. I'm going to eat chilaquiles. I kind of want chilaquiles. No, I kind of want to get them. Or we can make them. Mm. No. I need to use the ingredients I have at home. I have tortilla chips at home. I have eggs. I have beans. This is a fun little inside joke I've been doing with my boyfriend. If you're in a relationship, a heterosexual, disgusting relationship with a man and a woman. Yeah, disgusting. In 2021. If you're in a gross heterosexual relationship. Um, this is a fun thing you can do when your boyfriend is flaccid. Right before bed. Grab his tiny little shrimp dick while it's soft and go, oh my God, it's so big. What am I going to do with this? That's what I do, right? Oh my God. How do, how do you expect me to fuck this tiny, big, massive? I fucked it up. God damn it. But that's the joke, folks. He'll crack up. You got to really sell it, though. You got to grab it like you're about to do some action with it. You're not going to. You just grab it and you go, Babe, it's so big. Okay. Hope you guys have a good week. Everybody had a wet dream. Everybody had a good time. Oh, yeah. Everybody let the sun shine. Watch the Beatles docuseries. Watch Dope Sick. Watch Pen15. Um, what else did we see? There was something else we watched. We watched Sugon. We... <laughs> Sugon D's Nits. My my boyfriend's a comedian. He tries to get you to say these nuts. Yeah, we both have different forms of art, babe. I make blowjob faces and you'd go Sugon. Suganda. What's the other one? Ligma. Candace. Yeah, we're both artists. This is the episode where I don't really talk. I just do physical act outs. It's really good. People on Spotify and iTunes love this episode. Hey, if you like this episode or you didn't, who cares? Do a thumbs up, rate it, review it, leave a comment. What was my comment asking earlier? Book recommendations? Or just leave a comment saying, hey, what's up? What's up, little mama? All right. Have a good week. I'll talk to you guys soon. Um, God bless. Come to D.C. I'm going to be also next year. I'll be in San Francisco. I'll be in Sacramento. I'll be in Philadelphia. I'll be in Corpus Christi, Texas. I'll be there for you. (laughs) She's so quick. Where does she come up with this stuff? Okay. Mwah. Cheerio, bye. Oh, my friends, they think I'm dead.